This is part 10 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of Entity Splitting with Database First Approach. Entity Splitting refers to mapping an entity to two or more tables when the tables share a common K. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. Let's assume we have got these two tables, Employees, Employee Contact Details. If you notice, both of these tables have the same key column, which is Employee ID. This employees table contain their first name, last name and gender. Employee contact details table contain their contact details like email, mobile and landline numbers. Now let's say if we were to generate an ADO.NET entity data model based on these two tables, entity framework is automatically going to generate two entities. Employee entity based on this employees table. Employee contact detail entity based on this employee contact details table. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. I've already created these two tables. Here is the SQL script that can do it. I'll have the SQL script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a new empty ASP.NET web application project. To this project, let's add a new item. And we want to add ADO.NET entity data model. And let's give this a meaningful name. Let's call this employee model. And we want to generate our model from the database. So select that option click next, give the connection string a meaningful name. Let's call this employee DB context and click next. So this is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and store procedures. Let's select these two tables and let's give the model namespace a meaningful name. Let's call this employee model, click finish. Notice that it has generated two entities. Now, since the underlying tables share the common key column, which is employee ID, now we can map a single entity to both of these two tables. Okay, let's see what we mean by that. So now look at this. This employee entity contains first name, last name, gender, and employee ID, which comes from the employees table. And the employee contact details contain, you know, employee ID and their contact information, email, mobile, and landline. Now let's say we want all these properties of the employee to be present in a single entity. Let's say we want all of those properties in this employee entity. So how to achieve that? So select these three properties, email, mobile, landline. We don't have to you know, remove the employee ID because the employee entity has already got that. So I'm going to select these three properties and then press Control X to cut them. Right click on the employee entity and paste them. So now all the properties are present in this employee entity. Now right click on this employee contact details entity and delete that because we don't no longer need it because all our employee properties are now going to be present in the employee entity. Now on this prompt, this is very important. Make sure you click now because if you click yes, this employee contact details table will be removed from the store model as well and we don't want that and in a bit we'll understand the reason why. So on this prompt, make sure you click now. All right, now let's right click on this employee entity and select this table mapping option. Now if you notice this you know, mapping details here, look at this, at the moment this employee entity is mapped to employees table. And look at this employee ID column is mapped to employee ID property, first name column is mapped to first name property, so on and so forth last name and gender as well. Now, in addition to these properties, this employee entity also contain email, mobile and landline properties. So if you look at the table mappings, you know, they are not mapped at the moment. Okay, this entity at the moment, it's only mapped to employees entity. So we need to map that to uh, employee contact details table as well. And how do we do that? So here, if you drop this list down, notice that we have that employee contact details table there. Now, if you have selected yes on the prompt, you know, that has uh, uh, prompted when we were uh, deleting employee contact details, if you have selected yes there, then this option wouldn't have been available. So select map, uh, you know, employee contact details table. So this entity at the moment is now mapped to two underlying database tables and that's what is called as entity splitting.
okay and look at this the designer is smart enough to map the properties to the respective columns based on their names so employee id map to employee id email to email mobile to mobile and landline to landline right so let's go ahead and build a solution just to make sure everything still compiles all right now let's quickly add a web form to this project and then test our split uh, entity so let's add a web form and to this web form first of all let's set the style attribute let's use font family of area and then let's actually flip this to the design mode let's drag and drop um, a grid view control a details view control and an entity data source control okay and let's first configure our entity data source control so in the named connection let's select employee db context click next and here we should have our employees so we want to select all the properties and we also want to enable insert update and deletes click finish and let's configure our grid view control let's actually auto format this and select this colorful scheme and now let's choose entity data source one and let's enable editing and deleting okay and similarly let's configure our details view control let's select colorful scheme and then let's select entity data source and we want to enable inserting and another thing that we want to do on the details view is set the default mode just to insert because we're going to use details view only for inserting a record and we don't want this employee ID to be editable uh, so let's go ahead and change the employee ID bound field so let's set insert visible attribute to true we discussed all these steps in detail in our previous video session so I'm not going to go into the details uh, we actually need to set that to false so insert visible false so that all right so with all these changes let's go ahead and run this so when the web form loads it should display the employee information so now we have got a single entity which is employees has got the information from both the tables now let's see when we edit it if it updates the tables correctly so let's put a one next to their first name last name gender and maybe their email and landline number as well and then let's click update okay so it seems to have updated let's quickly go to the table and retrieve data and see if it has updated the tables correctly look at that entity framework is smart enough to update the underlying tables correctly look at that it has updated employees table as well as the employee contact details tables as expected let's quickly delete a row and see if it gets deleted from both the tables so we deleted that so let's come here and check if the row is deleted look at that row one is deleted and let's insert a new row let's say we want to insert test that's everything so last name is going to be test gender test and let's insert this okay so the record should have been inserted so let's quickly execute that look at that we get the inserted record and notice in both the tables employee ID is 6 so it's working as expected now the reason why it's not refreshing the grid view control here is basically because we need to add you know an event handler and then refresh the grid view control so for the details view control click on the events icon and double click on item inserted event here so that it's going to generate the event handler and within the event handler we're simply going to invoke the data bind method of the grid view control so now when we insert data so x let's say x everywhere or test for email gender mobile and landline and then let's insert this and notice that now it gets refreshed and within the database it should insert that record as well 
So this is the table mappings option where we have mapped the entity to the underlying table. So this is one of the very important steps. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.